Um, very excited to be 1-0. I uh, thought we had a great win over Stephen F. Austin. Uh, did a lot of very good things on offense, defense, and special teams. <clears throat> but certainly plenty to clean up moving forward. You know, recapping the game, uh, set a school single game record for tackles for loss with 17. Had 12 plays of 20 yards or more, which was the second most in FBS in week one. And 618 yards of total offense, which I'm told was the fifth highest total in Mississippi State single game history. Our players of the week on offense, as selected by the coaching staff, were uh, Keaton Thompson on offense, uh, tied, tied an SEC single game record with seven touchdowns. Uh, Co-defensive players, Jeffrey Simmons and Montez Sweat, combined, combined for seven tackles for loss, two sacks, and 10 overall tackles. On special teams, Dontavian Lee, who had three tackles. And on scout team, uh, the offensive scout team player of the week was TJ McMahon. The defensive scout team player of the week was Adrikus Connor. And the special team scout team player of the week was Kaysen Grant. Uh, our student athletes of the week, uh, as selected by our academic staff, uh, were Willie Gay and Chauncey Rivers. So, uh, like I said, certainly uh, excited to get a, a win in the left-hand column. Uh, you know, like I said, thought we did a lot of things and uh, certainly excited to move forward to Kansas State. Uh, moving on to them. It'll be our first true non-conference road game against a Power 5 opponent uh, since 2008, which was a loss to Georgia Tech, 35-7. to And uh, our last Power 5 non-conference win, unless I'm mistaken, was 1995, a 30-21 win over Baylor. Certainly having the opportunity to compete against a coaching legend like Coach Snyder uh, will be an unbelievable opportunity. Uh, you know. Bill Snyder Family Stadium, if the stadium's named after you, uh, you know you've done a pretty good job, so certainly excited for that opportunity. Uh, Kansas State's been to eight straight bowls and are the third winningest team in the Big 12 since the start of the 2011 season and started the year off with a 27-24 uh, to 24 comeback win over South Dakota, a very good FCS team uh, in the opener. They returned 14 starters, went 8-5 and five last year, and had a win over UCLA in the Cactus Bowl. Uh, offensively, Coordinator is Andre Coleman, was a player for Kansas State uh, in the mid-90s, played in the NFL for a bunch of years, Western PA guy, played his ball at uh, Hickory High School. Uh, so he's, he's got a very great pedigree and a lineage, uh, has been with Coach Snyder, so he understands the system. Uh, on offense, a fundamentally sound unit. They do what they do, quarterback power, quarterback counter, zone read, uh, play with two experienced dual threat quarterbacks, that force you to play with great eye discipline and gap integrity. And uh, are very, very impressed with their offensive line. They average 22 starts a player, very physical, disciplined, and they finish blocks. We feel their best players are the quarterbacks, Skylar Thompson and Alex Delton. Uh, Isaiah Zuber, a wide receiver, uh, played every game for the past two years, starting 11, uh, try to create matchups with him. And then Dalton Risner, the right tackle, uh, one of the top offensive linemen in the country, an All-American and All-Big 12 in 2017, started 38 games and the team captain. On defense, uh, another first-year coordinator, um, Blake Siler, will be his first year there. Uh, they are a four-down defense, play a mixture of coverages, you know, play some quarters, play some quarter-quarter half, uh, get in some man-to-man -man situations on third down. We'll also blitz you a little bit, uh, but very kind of a mirror image of their offense uh, and a mirror image of their program overall. Tough, smart, disciplined, physical, run to the football. And uh, they're not going to beat themselves. You know, we think the guys that are impressive up front, uh, number 99, Trey Dishon, is a guy that creates a lot of uh, you know, havoc from his defensive tackle position. Uh, at the second level, Daquan Patton, the Sam linebacker, is a guy. Uh, they had to replace all three linebackers. He's been very impressive. And then on the back end, Duke Shelley, uh, one of the corners, and Denzel Goolsby are guys that have stood out to us in film preparation. Uh, although the offense and defense are both very impressive units, uh, they're awesome on special teams. Their coordinator, Sean Snyder, it's his eighth year. Uh, and, uh, you know, they're one of the top, you know, special team units in the country historically. Uh, just looking at last week, they had a 95 punt, punt return for a TD callback. They're averaging 19 yards a return on kickoff. Uh, Isaiah Suber had an 85 yard punt return last week in the fourth quarter, averaging almost 50 yards a return. And uh, Blake Lynch is the kicker, was four for four last week in field goals. And they do an unbelievable job there. So, uh, once again, going to be an incredible challenge, uh, one we're very excited uh, to prepare for and to go out there and play. And um, take any questions.
Hey, Joe, you mentioned uh, with Nick Fitzgerald the incident that occurred back in, in the spring. Yeah. And voted team captain after that. Uh, how did you feel like he handled this past week, and especially during the game, being around the teammates and mm -hmm. different kind of roles? I think Nick handled it extremely well. Uh, you know, he was sent down to, to scout team for the week, so he, he worked to give our defense a very good look. Uh, he was very mature during the week in meetings and on the field. And, you know, on game day, I think he was a uh, vocal presence on the sideline and a great resource for KT being out there and just his second start. And, you know, with, with Nick and the other guys in our program, I think, you know, you know that, that, that's part of it, that, that as a coach and a program, you know, it's easy to mentor the guys when they're doing well and scoring touchdowns and you know everybody makes mistakes and you know I think that's part of the process that we got to do as, as good of a job uh, when things go bad as when things do good and, I, and I, I think Nick has learned from the experience I think he's going to be better from it coming out and uh, you know very be, it'll be very po positive moving forward. A couple of quick personnel things. What's yeah. Michael Story's status? Is he still indefinitely suspended? Yes sir. And Jamal Couch didn't play? Yeah. Against Stephen F. Austin, was there a reason for that? No, he's not. He's he's active. Okay. Uh, and then to go to the, the schedule, you're practicing on Sundays with Monday being the, the off day. What kind of went into that decision-making process, and how is a Sunday practice different since there isn't a rest day in between a game and, and that day? Yeah, that's um, – I'm not quite sure what kind of is the standard across the country, but that's something that every program I've been with has, has um, uh, kind of modeled that, uh, you know, come in on Sunday – and, uh, you know, you watch the tape, uh, you do individual and team game corrections from the previous game, and then you do a little bit of an introduction run game and pass game to the upcoming opponent, which we did, and then get into some special teams at the end. And then today's the player's off day and gives the coach and staff an entire day to, uh, to game plan and, and get the, uh, you know, offense, defense, and special team stuff ready for when the kids come in on Tuesday. From a health standpoint, did you guys come out of the game on, on Saturday? Yeah, I'm going to keep knocking on wood because it's, it's working. But, uh, yeah, just some bumps and bruises, nothing major. You know, uh, you know, we anticipate all the guys who played in the game, which were uh, significant. Uh, you know, a ton of people played, but we should be you know, ready to go for Tuesday. Coach, first game with the new staff, uh, kind of new terminology. How did that process go, and uh, were they real chatty on the headset like you did one? <laughs> were they chatty? Uh, no, I, I thought, you know, I'm very happy that, you know, we decided to go through it on that Wednesday uh, and, and kind of have a mock, you know, uh, game situation with, with, with uh, you know, coming out of the tunnel and, and all the things that go into the logistics of the game. So, you know, offensively it went very smoothly, you know, between series, you know, gathering information, communicating the information and getting it uh, to the kids and making the corrections and then, you know, clicking over on the defense side of the ball. You know, there were a couple substitution things, but, you know, outside of that, I, th I thought we did a very good job. So it went, went relatively smooth. One more follow-up on the Sunday practice thing. Yeah. Do, do you think having one practice on Sunday dedicated entirely <clears throat> to the previous game and then going into the game plan kind of helps them compartmentalize and be more effective in, in both aspects? Yeah. I, I'm, I, I've not been involved in a um, situation where Sunday is the player's days off and then Monday is the first full practice, so I, I really can't speak on that. But what I like about it is you meet, you watch the film, you come out, you make the corrections, and then halfway through practice, you put closure to that game, and then you move on ahead. So from what you said about the compartmentalizing and you know, making the corrections, fixing what needs to be addressed, and then moving forward, I, I think that's a, a good observation. Coach, some uh, questions on social media about the uh, sideline dunk contest after a score. Could you <laughs> explain what that means and who won the contest? Uh, I don't know who won. I think I might have had the most assists. I don't think I scored any of the buckets. But that was, uh, you know, I mean, I want our kids to be excited. I want them to have fun. And that's just, you know, we, we did it at Penn State with, with Saquon and some of the other guys and carried it over here. And, you know, I told our guys we want to, you know, make sure that we're, number one, celebrating as a team, you know, when we score a touchdown. So when the, when the uh, there were nine of them. So when we score a touchdown, you toss the ball to the referee, you find your teammates and the guys who helped you to get there and celebrate with them. And then when they come over to the sideline, you know, have a little fun with it. So I don't know. D, uh, someone had a, a 360 reverse, so I think they, they may have won it. Any apprehension about taking this team on the road for the first time, or is that where the experience you're going to rely on that? No, I think, you know, there's, you know, anytime you go on a road, you know, 
there, there's going to be, uh, you know, obstacles and things you have to kind of overcome, you know, not, not being on campus, not being in your hotel, not being able, through that routine. Uh, but, but I think, you know, we've got a good plan put together for, you know, our meetings here on Friday when we're getting to the hotel, you know, the, the, um, the meetings at the hotel when we're getting the kids to bed with it being an early kickoff. So to me, the challenge of it is as much the logistics as the timing and, you know, having a 6.30 a.m. wake up on, on Saturday morning, you know, having breakfast and as opposed to waiting an entire day and having walkers and more meetings, you know, you're touching your toes and going and, and the game's starting. So I think that the, the game kickoff time in addition to the travel will be the, the biggest thing that we have to address. Cowan came out and started the game the other night, but um, looked like a pretty steady rotation where you're running back, so yeah. especially the first three. Do you anticipate that continuing? Or is that just one of the things you're kind of trying out right now with those three? No, we, I think we had four guys get carries. I think three of them scored touchdowns maybe. Uh, is that right? Yeah, so you know, it's, it's a luxury to have you know, that many guys who are, who are capable players at this level. Uh, particularly when you get into the, the SEC schedule, where, where you know you know on a weekly basis it's going to be incredibly physical, but uh, you know we have a, have a rotation set with with Colin and Aries going into the game, and uh, you know we can uh, really ride the guy who has a hot hand for for lack of a better term. So you go into it with a planned rotation, and based on how the game's going and who's playing well, you know the, the rotation can could ever flow one way or the other. Kind of going off of that, Coach, Kylan, aside from Keaton, Kylan had the most carries with nine. Yeah. Was that just sort of a game flow thing, or do you anticipate somebody getting you know, upward of maybe 20 carries? Yeah, yeah I mean, I, it really kind of, I think, was based on, the, like you said, the flow of the game. There were a couple uh, scoring drives of three or four plays or less. I think, we, do we have a 13 play, 91 yard or somewhere in there? So, you know, I think part of it was based on, you know, a few quick strike scoring drives, but I, I think throughout the course of a game, if you're talking, you know, with our offense, you know, running between, you know, hopefully 72 to 80 plays a game, you'd like it to be split 50-50, uh, run and pass, and then the dispersal of those carries will be based on the rotation or, like we mentioned before, who has a hot hand. But uh, I mean, I, to kind of get to the point of what you're asking, I believe we're normally going to have more carries per game for that than the running backs, but KT also had, I think, 10 as well. You touched on this for a moment or two after the game the other night, but having a couple more days to reflect now, does anything stand out? What, what will you remember the most about your first game at Davis Way? I think the dog walk. I think that was a, uh, you know, <laughs> awesome experience. Um, you know, getting off the bus and having all the fans there and, and the incredible support that they show for, you know, uh, you know our team. You know, heading all the way into the tunnel. You know, running out of the tunnel for the first time to to. Uh, you know, the cowbells, and you know, I wear a double headset, so I really, it gets drowned out a little bit on third down. But, uh, you know, just the whole experience of, of being an SEC head coach for the first time and then winning your first home game. And, you know, just the, the, the fan support here in Starkville and for our team is, is phenomenal. And I, I think that'll be, aside from the win, will be the thing that stands out the most. Saw Daryl take some snaps at, at center uh, late in the game, and then yeah. Tyree worked in some. Was that a product of the game situation being what it was, or is that something that's going to be continued into SEC games? <clears throat> I think it was a little bit of both. Uh, you know, we had talked during the week that, um, you know, at a lot of positions, the guy that appears on the 2D may, be not the, may not be the next guy to go in, but the next best available person for that position. So uh, we want, talked about getting him some snaps at center and bumping some of the other guys around. So. One, we were going to do it regardless, but two, had a little bit more luxury in the second half to rotate some of those guys through because, uh, you know, it's, you know, it's a crit critical position on the line. Kansas State was the second worst pass defense in the country last year, uh, and they gave up 257 yards, I think, on Saturday night to an FCS school. When you look at them on film, do you see opportunities to attack them in the passing game? Yeah, we're, we're uh, and then also they were, I'm uh, showing here, third in the conference and 13th in the country in run defense last year. You know, six in the conference in total defense. Only gave up 25 points a game last year. So, uh, I think the, you know, you know like there, there's, you know, areas statistically, and part of it, the the, the pass defense may be because people can't run the ball on them successfully, so they're forced to pass the ball. So that may be where some of that st statistical skew occurs. But we're going to go into a game plan, you know, kind of doing what we do, you know, looking to establish a run and uh, force some people to. Uh, bring numbers to the box by support or pressure and, and create some one-on-one -on -one matchups on the perimeter. So uh, I, I don't think necessarily because that statistic belies uh, 
you know, a low ranking that we're going to go into the game with more of a passing thought process. Coach Osiris Mitchell with a couple of big catches for you this weekend. I know that conference has been an issue with him. What have you seen from him this fall camp that elevated him to a starting position? What had been an issue? I didn't hear. Confidence. Oh, confidence had been? No, um, you know, he's kind of a quiet, unassuming kid. Uh, he, I kind of I was glad that he was able to participate in the post-touchdown dunk contest to get him a little more fired up. I'd like him to show a little more energy, a little more enthusiasm, body language, but just, that's kind of how he is by nature. So. Uh, for him to have two for two and, you know, get his college career rolling that way and, you know, build off of that experience and have success, uh, I think that's going to, you know, really, uh, you know, help him moving forward. Because he's very, very talented, you know.